name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, and today, as I said, we're going to talk about the power of social selling. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to have each of the uh, individuals introduce themselves rather than me reading out the bios. Um, so first of all, um, Mick, uh, Mick Adam, would you want to tell people a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Mick Adam. I'm based in Bruges, Belgium. Uh, I'm a social selling practitioner and social selling trainer. Um, and I'm trying to bring people onto the next level of social selling um, from what it was before. And I guess some of the subjects will be treated today. Um, I'm not only a trainer, but also a practitioner. Excellent. And Edward van der Klein. Uh, hi there. Yeah, my, name, my name's Edward. Um, I, I'm, uh, I run an organization called uh, uh, Blam Online. Um, we are a, um, a network of um, tech entrepreneurs that help small businesses double their businesses using the internet. And um, yeah, I'm based in Birmingham in the UK and a uh, big fan of social selling. Excellent. And Lena Doppel, do you want to introduce yes. yourself? Hello. Hi, my name my name is Lena Doppel and I'm not a digital couch as it as your slide says. I'm a digital oh. coach. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, my apologies. Yeah, I'm, also, I'm also an author. I wrote a book called Digital Happiness. Mm -hmm. My main work is in content marketing and social media marketing. And I try to get people to understand that social media is more than just ads that you spread among other people that social media is about conversations so that's my claim to fame when it comes to social selling very good uh, excellent and uh, and as i said my name is john golden from sales pop online sales magazine and pipeliner crm but i have uh, written a lot in the past about social selling so i'm quite interested in this uh, in this discussion today and i wanted to start off with uh, with just um, setting up a fundamental question, right? So, um, over over the last you know number of years or whatever, there was there has been a there was a lot of talk about social selling uh, some years back, and there was a lot of hype about it, and everybody was uh, was uh, was talking about it and, and and writing about it and discussing it. Um, so, I wanted to start off with the fundamental setup question, like has it, has social selling lived up to the hype? And um, Mick, why don't you kick off with that one? Well, has it lived up to the hype? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I, I think there was a, a lot of hype. It was the next shortcut to doing sales um, where results were quick and um, People hadn't, didn't really need to do any effort. I love what, what Lena just said. It's all about the conversation. And I think a lot of the salespeople out there have not accepted the fact that it's all about the conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that is where it all goes wrong. That's why it hasn't lived up to it. It has also not lived up to it because it has been most of the time reduced to one thing only, namely, I use LinkedIn, period. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, yeah. social selling. Mm -hmm. Then what I would say is that if you say that, I think then I say, well, maybe social selling is I use emails or whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> it's more than just about you know using a tool. It's about using. It's about an attitude. It's about an approach. It's about an integrated thing that leads to the end of the line, which is the sale. But it's all about having those conversations, and that has not lived up to the uh, to the uh, hype that it was a few few years, and it is still now. Mm -hmm. No, good, good points. And what I like what you just mentioned there was the idea of shortcut. You know that uh, people saw it as a shortcut, and I think uh, that that's. Uh, that's a that's a a very important point because I think people are always looking for shortcuts and then there are no shortcuts. So, um, um, mm -hmm. Lena, how about you? Do you think it's lived up to the hype? I I don't so I don't think so either. Especially since I I don't think in Austria there was such a hype mm -hmm. as such. Yeah. Uh, in in the German speaking world, it's it's not really overhyped yet because people are still trying to to discover ways, for example, to do B two B work on social media. Mm 
mm-hmm. and of course linkedin and and xing and all, and and some other uh, tools have come into the into the focus of people but i did some seminars last year where i realized that uh, people are thinking of social very often as the domain of like spamming spreading mm-hmm putting um, stuff out in the world, but not uh, one-on-one, but to the many. Right. And when I talk to them about uh, doing one-on-one work, about connecting to people one-on-one, about searching for prospects, for example, like like you would, uh, I have a background in journalism, yeah, so mm-hmm. I know how to search stuff and I know how to search in, in social media. Then they're like, you mean like really talking to people? <laughs> <laughs> And, but that's what they do in real life as well. And, and they are not aware that you can do it online, that you can actually connect to people online. Yeah, that's very, still hard. No, that's a very good point, Lena. And, um, and Edward, what's your, what's your thoughts? Lived up to the hype? Um, well, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm kind of, uh, I, I guess in my world, um, we, we, um, we, we do use sales for selling a lot. And it... Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting that you the reasons you give for it not living up to the hype, and I, and I kind of get that because there's still, um, uh, and that's part of my answer as well. A lot of, um, uh, well, not not many companies have fully understood what it actually means, mm-hmm. um, be, because they 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 don't really adopt the the, the attitudes as you mm-hmm. said, um, uh, and 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 also the processes that are involved with social selling, um, uh, you know, and you know, attitudes have started to change a bit, I think. And even mm-hmm. even traditional companies are now um, have started to embrace what I would categorize as modern marketing tactics, mm-hmm. where 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 the, where the subject matter and content leads the way, which mm-hmm. then which is which is promoted through social, um, where where you can then you know because there's such um, you know hyper targeted audience nowadays and you know quite sophisticated um, ways of telling. Who, who, what the audience is like, and then starting that conversation, as you mentioned, Lena, um, mm-hmm. you know, to start with, well, hey, you know, how are you doing? Um, but in a virtual world, and mm-hmm. I agree with, I agree with you. There's still a lot of people not comfortable with that. You know, mm-hmm. huh? Who's this? You know, why mm-hmm. are you talking to me through my machine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Good points. Um, and just uh, for the, for those. Uh, for those um, listening and, and watching today, if you have any questions, just put them into the question box, and uh, we'll pose them to the panelists as well. Uh, to the panelists as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to the second one. Okay, so um, like I said, you know, um, social selling came onto the scene a while back, and as Mick, um, you know, rightly put out, I mean, a lot of it revolved around kind of LinkedIn, and in some ways, um, some people got stuck there. Um, but um, but maybe maybe starting off here with uh, Lena, how how has it evolved over the past couple of years? Do you think from its from its initial kind of burst onto the scene? Mm, I, from or, my experience, or has or even has it evolved? Yeah. <laughs> I I think there is something that definitely has evolved over the last years, and that is that the people are more comfortable with the idea of something that is called the customer journey. Mm-hmm. And the customer journey was not known when before for the before there was online before there was an online world with different points where you can get a different kind of interest from 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 a customer. The the journey was not real for for many people. But now they realize by having the experience themselves. I think I think that is important that the people that are CIO, CEOs or or in in other uh, positions to to decide this kind of marketing strategies that they have experienced by themselves how that works how you see something online and then and then you go to a website and then you see it again and then whatever yeah and it makes it easier for me to talk to them about strategies where you talk to strangers online and I think the customer journey, even if it's not, it's not, it's not exactly used. It's not only used for 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 the social selling process. Is a very good thing to explain to people that there are different people in different stages of wanting to buy something that you can actually get with different strategies. Excellent. And uh, Edward, uh, what's your thoughts? Has it evolved? 
Oh, it's evolving all the time as, as um, you know, social networks um, evolve, um, you know, algorithms evolve. Um, but um, yeah, I, th I think I think what what's happened is now because, and I think this is one of the fundamental things where people get excited about social media. It's 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 basically a, a, a ton of people giving up their data for free, um, mm -hmm. which was pre we previously had to buy, mm -hmm. um, and and it's it's just um, you know for finding finding ways um, to to sort of in, engage with that you know, audience and, and, and filter, filter out, you know, it's like sifting. It's, it's a bit like gold mining, you know, you have to mm -hmm. do a lot of sif a lot of sifting. Um, but you know, there's sophisticated, you know, so the, the, the evolution has been that there's, you know, a really sophisticated marketing software comes to, has come to the marketplace where you can really do that sifting, um, you know, into, into, you know, specific segments and create different messaging strategies, um, you know, for that. I mean, we, we've been using messenger chatbots, um, you know, over the last few months, and you know, that, that's, you know, it's unbelievable, really, quite how powerful that is in terms of getting the goals that you want to achieve. You know, mm -hmm. really top of the funnel type stuff. You know, just getting mm -hmm. people to inquire initially, just to sort of raise their hand and say, you know, oh, yeah, I'm interested in this. You know, yeah. and um, so yeah, I definitely see. Um, you know, and it's it's not just has evolved, but it's evolving all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and what about you, Mick? What are your thoughts on on how it has evolved or is evolving? Well, I, I think when I look at social selling, uh, if you go back a few years back, I think when social selling first popped up, it was it used to be the field of marketing that was going to engage in social selling. Um, what I am seeing now is that more and more actually salespeople are using social to go out there to start selling and i think that's a major difference is that the whole social selling bit is being shifted from marketing to sales mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. of course marketing being a key contributor and and sometimes a driver but i don't think they're in the right place to drive it but i think they are um marketing becomes the support engine for sales when it comes down to content because mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. it it's all about conversation and you only start conversation with content and with valuable content. And I think when, when marketing initially heard the term, you know, social selling, they thought, yeah, this is for us and we're going to fire all the salespeople. I think now we're getting, <laughs> we're, we're getting to a time where salespeople are saying, well, we are all, we are all doing the right things. Let's fire marketing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for that, Mick. As uh, as I look after marketing at Pipeliner, um, so. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, here's a quick question from Andrew Jenkins. Hi, Andrew. Uh, good, good, uh, good to hear from you. Um, Andrew is a good friend of, uh, of Pipeliner and SalesPop as well. Um, he asked this question that it was mentioned that social selling is not just LinkedIn. So he was wondering, are there other platforms or channels beyond the obvious ones that the panel would recommend? For instance, have they found value in Bebby or Shaper or others? Well, what I would like to add to the whole conversation, it's not just only about the four conversation platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, but I think a lot of the value lies in content platforms like the YouTubes, the blogs, the forums, the, uh, the, the Instagrams mm -hmm. of this world, where you create the content. And that's where the value for, for, for social sellers comes from. It's from these content platforms rather than from the the you know the, the the things that we traditionally see LinkedIn possibly Facebook and Twitter, but I think from my point of view, it the value and the other platforms lie more in the, in the content curation content creation fields. Can I yeah. can I add something? Yes, go ahead. Can I add something to that? Uh, uh, what I look into for my clients, uh, since my my clients mostly are. Yeah. My clients that are interested in that kind of stuff mostly are smaller organizations or, or even uh, not companies, but for example, uh, NGOs. Mm -hmm. uh, I always try to find some spaces where other people are not that active. Not, not the people that are reading and the people that are communicating, but the people who are trying to sell something. Right. So for example, we, we realized a long time ago that uh, since the, the links in the forums underneath uh, newspaper articles, 
are no longer usable for SEO because they have the no follow tag on them. Not many people actually post links to interesting sources underneath uh, in these discussion boards. So we had a, a really great uh, project with a client who uh, was in the top 10 of his market by just uh, taking part in interesting discussions underneath uh, articles. And then not at the beginning, not as a spam, as, as the first comment, but at the end of the discussion, posting a link to his site. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of work that I do to find like niches where people can do social selling. Yeah. And I find that more interesting than actually apps. I mean, that's for, for people, for, this, for really salespeople who have lots of stuff and lots of leads and, and, and a large funnel. That's, that's another thing. Yeah? That's, yeah. that's also okay. Yeah. And um, uh, how about you, Edward? Are there are there other platforms that, uh, that you look at, like Andrew mentioned? Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we um, we're very big on Instagram, um, but then that's a, that's a, that's a that's a full strategy um, content mm -hmm. uh, using using the um, the search to um, you know to to seek out um, popular hashtags um, and you know pop popular people who who are into the same stuff because people who are into the same stuff as you are and who have got huge followings, it's worth following them and then following their followers. So there's a real, we actually have a strategy for that. Um, and then we use Instagram messaging and Instagram stories mm -hmm. um, to engage, mm -hmm. engage the audience uh, and push them towards um, a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I totally agree with you, Lena, um, you know, very niche Facebook groups. And this is how I see, I mean, just mm -hmm. to sort of, um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, sort of uh, um, one of the few, few uh, questions coming up. Um, uh, so we use LinkedIn connections, uh, LinkedIn messaging, Instagram messaging, WhatsApp messaging, um, mm -hmm. messenger chatbots. Um, again, something we've only started re recently, but it's proving very, very successful. So uh, using Facebook Messenger, um, uh, but everything needs to lead to a community uh, where people can pick up something um, of value, um, mm -hmm. which is the Facebook group. And um, but but it's all part of a bigger strategy. Um, of, of of engaging engaging the prospect um, mm -hmm. uh, and and sort of exactly. yeah, but so, social is really leading the way there because of the the accessibility of of um, of people who are active already. You can see that they're active. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're checking in daily. They're commenting. Mm -hmm. you know, they're raising their hands, saying like, "I'm into this." Mm -hmm. Like Very brand ambassador, basically. Yeah. No? yeah. Okay. Um, so. Um, the next question, uh, Mick, what are, what are some of the most effective social selling techniques? So let's get a little tactical here for the folks and give them some uh, insights. Start conversations, react. <laughs> it's really simple. <laughs> start, start talking to people. I mean, if people, you know, do something with your content, look at you, whatever, but it's all about starting that conversation and maintaining that conversation. I mean, in the old world, you used to have to drive to your clients and prospects on a regular basis. Well, now you do this from your desktop. You start that conversation. How are you? What are, you know, uh, what, what are the things that are working, not working for you? What are your maybe pain problems if, if they want to talk about that? Probably not. But at least you'll find out. It's, it's about when you talk to people, you'll know how you can help them. And I think mm -hmm. helping people will actually generate uh, a lot of stuff and you do this both through real life contact and, and the real world as well as social which makes it so much easier because you don't have to travel so I think starting and maintaining conversations through comments sharing liking you name it that's how it all works and invest in the long term and so invest in the long term. So basically um, don't don't back to your original comment is don't expect a, a shortcut, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are no there are no shortcuts. Are no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, yeah, you might have a quick win left or right, but you would have had that quick win anyways in, a, in, in another way. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's all about engaging, about talking to people, uh, people still or, you know, making that conversation happen. And that, that will, at the end of the day, is to me the most effective way of social selling today is talk to people. Everybody in your network, whether it's on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it, know who they are, talk to them, engage with them, see what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. And 
if you do something for them, it will come back. That is a law that kept, that is working forever, has been working for years. You do something for somebody, it will come back. Give and you will receive. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And what about what about you, um, Lena? What are some of the most effective techniques that you can recommend? Um, from from the content marketing point of view, for example, it's it's very important that for for example, if you start something like a blog, mm -hmm. that you don't try to talk about yourself. Right. Uh, you have to to realize that what people want is something that is useful to them, something that interests them, something that is of any any uh, value or use to them so for example if you if you're a company selling a product don't talk about the product but think about what kind of problems could people have that use your product and then talk about how to uh, resolve that problems these kind of problems yeah and that works ex astoundingly well because then people think okay you pro you pro you're a producer of that product but you also know about the problems that people can have that use that product so you're real yeah you're not faking it mm -hmm. and that's that's very important to not only start conversations but also to keep people engaged with whatever you can give them because in the end that's marketing speech okay yeah you you have to solve their problems that's how you sell yeah so uh, just just a quick question on that because um it's it's like one of those things today like everybody has a blog every company pretty much has a blog mm -hmm. now it's like one of those mm -hmm. things like it's an about us page oh we got about you know your products your company about us and blog um but i i see that a lot of companies you know they have a blog but they don't really invest a lot of effort mm -hmm. in making it high quality yeah, yeah. that's bad I mean, either you have one or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have it, you have to invest into good content. You have to invest into interesting content. Otherwise, you just, I mean, I, I, I advise people, if you can't fill like three or four or five paragraphs, then use Facebook, you only have to write one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Um, and Edward, what are some of what are some of the most effective social selling techniques? I um, mean, you mentioned a few already, but what are some other ones that uh, that people could use? And that you've seen success yeah. with? Yeah, well, so it's something that we've adopted ourselves, um, and and so the last six months invested a lot of time into developing. Um, is that we 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 built a resource center for for our partners, where you know the most commonly asked questions, um, you know, to to to, to do with um, you know uh, the, the business opportunity. Um, are being fielded and you know so we just gathered all that content up and then um, we created a little video blog so that people can click on the video and have it explained uh, little screen sharing sessions um, and you know so when, when we do um, when we do like a, a, a follow-up call uh, with, with one of our customers then um, we, we ask if we can record it mm -hmm. um, and then we actually do a mm -hmm. screen share and we actually so whatever we're demonstrating to them um, mm -hmm. on, on a how to or um, you know on how to solve the problem or um, you know a particular process we actually record it and we've now put it into a resource center and um, that, that, that and, and make that available and then so each month we promote you know sort of top top ask questions and it's it's just yeah it's a bit, a bit of clever clever thinking really because we think we, we keep asked, being asked the same questions all the time we spend mm -hmm. a lot of time on the mm -hmm. phone. We spend a lot of time talking to people, which we don't mind because that's what it's all about. Because then you find out more about the customer as well. But having that available has been absolutely fantastic, um, and that's actually developed into an, a, an actual product now as well. So because a lot of that content is available, is valuable for people in general, not just our customers. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's um, that. So that's been really, really effective, as in creating a a resource center ba based around your most commonly asked questions. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good uh, really good piece of advice because as you say, I mean, a lot of times people are going to, you know, have similar issues and the same issues. So rather than uh, exactly, yeah. repeating mm -hmm. yourself, actually pr provided uh, the resource mm -hmm. so people can access it in ad in advance. Um, very good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, maybe um, Lena, do you want to start off with this one? Um, uh, so one of the problems that have always uh, has always been with social selling, even over the years, is that um, 
it's been difficult. Sales managers have ha- have struggled mm-hmm. with evaluating the activities of their reps, right? So, uh, mm-hmm. in the old in the old days, it was pretty simple, right? So if their if if their sales guys were were making you know fifty calls a day or a hundred calls a day, that's easy. Mm-hmm. They can see, mm-hmm. and and they can appreciate. They say, okay, they're out selling, or they're out. You know, calling on on prospects and customers, you know, that's something that uh, a sales manager can get their head around. Um, but for a lot of sales managers, the thought of their sales people just being online and on LinkedIn and on Facebook and all these other places, it, it's harder for them to evaluate the uh, the effectiveness of this. So, how are some ways that a sales manager could evaluate the activities mm-hmm. of their reps? So I, I I think basically it's always better to evaluate the effectiveness by results and not just by by numbers like calls. But mm-hmm. what, how many of those calls actually were effective and 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 got to a sale? Uh, but but in 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 the in the real world, what I actually what I witness it very often is that uh, uh, someone comes with a social selling technique, mm-hmm. usually a younger member of the sales team. And he or she has such astounding, astoundingly different. Uh, uh, not, he has more. He finds more clients, but he, he finds clients in 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 very different fields, for example, or in a different country. So it's out of the ordinary for the others. And uh, very often, it 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 divides in people who do that kind of selling and people who don't, can't, won't. Yeah. So you have basically you have to have uh, something where you can where you can evaluate them on a on a on a basis that is common to them. Yeah. So it's not like uh, evaluating someone wrote 50, 50 uh, messages on on LinkedIn versus someone made 50 phone calls. But in the end, it's who sold what to whom. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And and Mick, um, Mick, what are some of the ways that sales managers can effectively evaluate whether their their salespeople are being effective with social selling? Actually, I'm I'm going to 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 uh, follow on what what Justina kind of said. Do we really need to measure social selling? I don't think so. I think we need to measure the results because different people operate in different um, ways. And, and there are still people who do a ton of business by going to have lunch with their clients every day. And at the end of the day, they put in the 10 millions and the 100 millions of dollars. So I think trying to measure social selling as such is probably not on the, it shouldn't really be on the agenda unless you're into the social selling index of LinkedIn, but I'm not. Um, but I, I think some of the things that uh, how you can measure what social selling does is possibly do bring in the whole social bit, uh, and that what I mean by that is bring in the content that you've shared and that actually got a lot of traction. Bring in the conversations you've had, and bring that into the sales meetings and talk about that. And I think that is a good measurement of how much time are you actually talking during your sales meeting about great content that generated conversations and that generated interest with your clients. If you start measuring some things along those lines, I think you're you're probably on on a better track than trying to measure how many emails did I send or how many whatever did I send that, that didn't get answered. But at the end of the day, there is only one measurement. It's sales. It's what these people are paying for. Mm-hmm. And that's the only measurement that really counts. How you do it, I mean, well, somebody's going to find another, you know, shortcut on social selling soon, I, I would mm-hmm. think. So then we're all going to get on the next current. So I think it's all about is your business delivering the results that you're looking for? And, and the results are sales, is margin, that kind of stuff. And I don't think you should be measuring social selling as, as an individual. Because if you do that, you're going to have to start measuring how much success you have through email, how much success do you have through phone calls, and so mm-hmm. on. And everybody has their, has their own style. Right. 
Uh, I know it doesn't help you any further, but <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. It's a, it's, it's a legit, it's a legitimate, uh, a legitimate uh, opinion. Um, and Edward, how do you, how would you advise people, or would you, sales managers, how to evaluate the the social selling activities of their reps? Yeah, um, measurement is really important for us because you know there's obviously so many hours in the day, and we we want to get as many results as possible. Um, that now. Um, yeah, so so we 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 help um, our customers create a cookbook, you know. So a cookbook and has has just a number of uh, things in there that they want to focus on in terms of whether it's you know call calling, numbers of emails sent, number of LinkedIn invitations made, um, number of messages sent through Instagram, and all the rest of it. Yeah. So um, and and you do you do start to paint a bit of a picture as to what works and what doesn't. Um, and then, and then, you know, sort of reevaluate that on a regular basis, and then, and then focus on what works really. Um, and you know, so we've got, we've got, you know, some some proven methods now that actually do deliver consistent results. Um, and, and and bizarrely, if you do more of it, um, you get better results. <laughs> um, uh, and so, so, and that's really once you got those numbers, you you, you start you start um, you know. You can start to trust in it, and it increases a lot more certainty in terms of how you can predict where the business is going to come from. Um, the other thing I'd like to say as well, um, as, as um, you quite rightly said earlier, Mick, um, you know, there's always been this constant fight between marketing and sales. I think I think they're converging a lot more um, mm-hmm. because um, you know because because um, you know sales guys are getting involved in the social networks, uh, creating profiles, writing blogs. Um, I think it's really important that they that they um, connect with the marketing team to get the right messaging, mm-hmm. um, uh, because because sometimes you know it's it's easy to go off on a tangent and actually don't ha- forget the strategic intent as as to why you're that actually there w- without being you know unfriendly. Of course, you know you need to, you need to go through the pleasantries and build rapport is really really important. But um, you know sometimes you do need to have the strategic intent and sort of ask that question: Is this something you want to? you want to actually go for um and um you know that that that, that's obviously what sales managers want sales guys to focus on more of that closing Mm -hmm. um so so it's uh it it is important to have a a, a consistent lead funnel and Mm -hmm. and 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 and, yeah a measure i think because was it peter drucker that said but you can't measure you can't improve or something like that um what what's um what uh what gets measured gets managed Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Okay. So no, that was good. So here's a, another quick question from somebody here. Um, is okay. Um, what What are some of the ways you can? Uh, what What are some of the ways you can get started with social selling? So if you're behind the curve here and you and your salespeople aren't really engaging in social selling in any meaningful way. What uh, what are some ways you would recommend that they could start? Uh, what, what are some good starting points? Um, maybe Edward, do you want to give us a, a quick couple of starting points? Yeah, we've got, it's a it's a three step process. Um, so it's build your profile. Um, go, go out there and um, look at Mick Adams' um, profile and Lena's profile, and just pinch their ideas in terms of how they how they publish themselves. Really, really mm-hmm. important. Um, second one is uh, always always be connecting. Um, just go out there and and connect with people. F- find find your niches. Um, go and find those people and and reach out. Send out invitations um, uh, and connect with people. Um, and the third one is then to um, you know to to really you know start start publishing useful content so that you know you can start determining from your contacts as to who's into what uh, and sort of have a strategic intent for that. So drive that you know start start asking questions about you know, qualification, whether they want to actually become your customer. Um, and it's good if they don't, you know, because you need to know whether they do or don't. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's an okay question to ask. You know, if they're not, not your customer, that doesn't mean they can't be your friend, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and how about you, um, uh, Mick? What are, what are some of the ways somebody could get started? I, I think I, I will follow on with, with what Edward said. I think it's entirely right. Build your profiles. But I think I want to, take one step earlier than that is try and identify who my ideal clients and prospects are and where do they live on social so that I'm not spread thin and I, you know, work or 
do stuff on and share stuff on the platforms where my clients are. I think identifying what your where your clients are uh, and and what they share, what they listen to, what they have to say is, in my opinion, also two important steps that one shouldn't uh, forget when you start with social selling. And definitely, you know, make professional profiles, make, and build up networks and followers and whatever you want to call them. And, and 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 share and start conversations. Excellent. And 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 Lena, what are some of the uh, what are some good starting points from your point of view? Uh, the the two others were talking about what what to do. I'm I'm going to talk a little bit of the framework that you probably have to put that into. Uh, I I usually start this kind of project with uh, trying to get the salespeople and the marketing people to talk to each other. <laughs> that's very important because uh, usually I do this when I, when I do a real project I do it for larger organizations in a small organization I can I can do a one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. but if there's a larger organization then they have to talk to each other they have to give each other information especially mm -hmm. the salespeople have to understand how the social media marketing works because they are probably not going going to do uh, a lot of it themselves but they have to to access uh, the content that is already there as well. And then what I really think is important, at, at least for people who are uh, uh, already selling, but selling the traditional way, is some kind of training. Yeah. Because what, what I experienced is that people have so many misconceptions about online. They have so many ideas that don't work out and you can you can give them a little bit more uh, 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 self self assurement when they when they know that okay this i don't have to try that because others have tried and it doesn't work but i can mm, try this right yeah and and these two things together they work and i think the training in the future will maybe also be very important because some of the some of the framework uh, things have cha have changed or are changing right now with the general data protection regulation mm -hmm. yeah so there is not people are unsure do i is it okay to save that do i am i am i allowed to talk about that how do i not come across as creepy when i note down that this guy has done this or that and then i mention it again two weeks later is that creepy so you have to talk to them about that yeah no that's a that's a great point Lena. and i think uh, with the with the gdpr there there's uh, there's a lot of unknowns out there and i think yeah. uh, you're you're absolutely 100 percent correct i mean i think it goes for uh, any initiative that you should that you attempt um you should definitely provide the the training for it and unfortunately as we know in 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 sales um even to this day, salespeople don't get invested enough in in terms of, of training um, mm -hmm. and, and professionalization. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I think it's more, sorry, go on. If I may, I think it's more than just training. It's also a lot of guidance after the training. Yeah. Because yes. yeah. Training is, is one, yeah. one moment in time, but I think it's the actual putting this all into practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind yep. of coaching, guiding, whatever, and that's the that's one of the roles for sales managers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, I totally agree with you. I think the problem there is that uh, uh, to coach uh, and mentor something, you have to know how to do it yourself. And I think uh, maybe part mm -hmm. of the problem at times is that you know that some sales managers aren't uh, you know don't have the social selling knowledge or skills so it's hard for them to to coach so i think that's where yeah the role of uh, outside consultants maybe come in to you know engage somebody to to help coach not just the uh, not just the sales people but the sales managers too yeah but that's also a role for marketing that's how marketing can actually contribute to a large degree uh, in in their own company mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's a good point. All right, Mick, um, why don't you lead off with this uh, the, the final question here? Um, how do you see social selling evolving or changing in the future? Well, I think that the term social selling as such, in my opinion, will probably disappear mm -hmm. because it's just going to be part of sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a methodology or it's just one of the channels that is at the disposal of a salesperson. So I, I think... That's, that's one thing that I'm, I'm going to see is that the focus on the terminology will disappear. I think that the, the whole technique will evolve. And I think from a technique point of view, I think we will actually see more of a, uh, as, as, as Edward said, more of a sales and marketing integration um, 
over the over the future when it comes down to social selling. Yeah. Well, and how about you, Edward? Where, where, what changes do you see in the future? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's certainly is, it's always evolving, and I think that you know the key, the key for um, you know sales teams and marketing teams is to be you know be be, con- be constantly um, you know uh, lo- looking at new opportunities to do to things differently. You know, allow time for that. Um, I think chatbots, um, you know, definitely are having their day at the moment. So. Uh, they will evolve to be even more targeted, and that's because um, I think there are going to be a lot more niche social networks. Um, you know that will continue to emerge. Um, I say, I think also, you know, as marketers are getting you know wise to this, um, there are going to be much more sophisticated nurturing funnels. You know, mm-hmm. with um, uh, you know with content, uh, and 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 obviously the uh, the different products that are available within the funnel. Uh, that, that will become a lot more mainstream, I think. So you'll see a lot more of that. Um, we're seeing an integration uh, of what's called uh, social commerce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, social networks actually having having e-commerce um, uh, integrated into it. So I can see so that's that, that's direct sales into social media. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that, that's that's actually happening. They call it shoppable posts. Right. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on, um, and and yeah, and, and and long may that you know beautiful marriage between sales and marketing, um, you know, evolve. Um, just, yeah. just quickly, um, uh, can you just for those who may not uh, understand um, or or have used chatbots, what what do they do? Do you want to just explain for people? Um, well, they they um, uh, they start a conversation with somebody who's on your um, on your Facebook group or your Facebook page. Um, and then um, it, 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 can, it can be all uh, multifaceted. It can be just in, oh, hey, how are you? You know, and then somebody answers. And then within that answer, there may be a number of different keywords. Uh, and then based on those keywords, uh, uh, another automated answer will come. Um, then, you know, you can actually program it to, you know, start asking qualifying questions. So, you, so, so the, the marketing qualified lead can actually emerge from there. Um, that can go into a yes and no multiple multiple choice questionnaire. Um, uh, you, you can send them to a quiz. You can send them to a survey. You can you can get them to download a piece of content directly from the chat bot uh, from the chat window. Um, yeah, so it's it's really quite clever um, what, what you can do with it. You can embed video into it if you want if you want them to see some more information. Um, so yeah. Pretty, 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 pretty sophisticated, and the open rates are just phenomenal at the moment because everybody's on Facebook, um, and um, yeah, it, it's also a great way to sort of get your advertising, Facebook advertising, to really work because obviously, if you're channeling people to go and see some content within your Facebook page, then um, um, it's great to have that chatbot, and then you can now also um, make those um, messenger bots uh, become your. Um, uh, chat window on your website so it's all integrated so it's pretty pretty neat stuff mm-hmm. excellent and uh, and lena what do you see are the the changes in the future uh, chatbots is also something that i see i see in the future but maybe maybe as a kind of a transformal mid mid phase from how we do business now mm-hmm. uh, to a time where we do business uh, with augmented by autom- automated systems. I've been to Hong Kong last year and I saw a presentation uh, about what WeChat can do inside of China, where basically you you have apps uh, uh, on the selling on the selling side of WeChat that you don't uh, see as apps. You don't know it's an app. It's just the site, the website of of the shop you're interacting with in a in a chat for a chat basis or whatever, and it sells you stuff in an automated system. And I think these kind of things are going to pop up a lot. If people ever get used to giving Facebook their uh, 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 credit card information, which mm-hmm. obviously is not that easy, uh, because in, 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 in China, everyone pays everything with systems like WeChat. And another thing, I think uh, probably it's, it's all over the place in the English-speaking world, but it's not here in, in, in the German-speaking world yet in to, to that amount are lead generating tools. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn has started with it, but uh, uh, Xing has nothing uh, compared to that. But I think uh, you could do them for Twitter. You could do them to a certain amount for Facebook, only to a certain amount. Facebook would have to do them. Uh, 
I don't know how people will react to that kind because they will have to give their consent in the future to, mm -hmm. to be uh, included in, in such a system. But of course, it's easier in a system where everyone wants to sell or buy, like mm -hmm. LinkedIn or Xing, than it is on Facebook that so many people use privately. And there's another thing, uh, I think nudging is a big subject in the future, not only in social selling, but but in, in general terms in, in, in the sales world. So giving people hints, not pushing them to buy something, but giving people hints, giving people help uh, deciding, right. uh, not having too many products. That's, that's all psychology uh, uh, related uh, uh, strategies that are going to evolve, that are going to be merged with technology. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more because I think one of the things about the the digital world that we live in today is that uh, there's a point of of noise pollution, you know, where people just get overwhelmed mm -hmm. by things coming from any, everywhere. Yeah. So anything that helps um, them to sort out, you know, what's important, I think will be useful. All right. So um, let's just go around everybody uh, as we're coming to the end. Um, just one last insight from each of you, uh, Mick. Any, any, just on on anything to do with social selling. Just one last quick insight. So oh, I, I think the, the the last insight that I want to share is, Elena mentioned it already. It all starts with training, but in my opinion, it also has a lot to do with coaching, and 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 the fact that you know you you get people to actually guide you through this process. And for me, that is a perfect role for marketing. Excellent. Which then, which then brings marketing and sales even closer together. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And Edward, one last quick insight. Um, yeah, just um, if, if you think about social selling, think about the niche of the niche and then the niche of that. Um, because, um, you know, the more specific you can be, um, you know, the more engagement you'll get. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah very mm -hmm. good. And, and Lena, one last insight. It's actually not, not an insight of mine, but of one that comes from a student of a friend of mine. And, and uh, she uh, asked people why they found it, uh, why, why they thought it creepy that, uh, for example, retargeting, that ads were following mm -hmm. them more across websites, or they saw something, bought something on Amazon and then saw it on Facebook. And people said, I want to change that. I want to be able to change that. I want to see why they do that. Mm -hmm. And then I want to change that. But when they had the tools to change it, nobody changed it. Oh. So, <laughs> transparency yeah. transparency is the thing people want to know what the machine does and yeah. they not necessarily want to to the machine to not doing it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. they just want to know and i think every tool that we are developing in the future has to have this kind of transparency to make people to mm -hmm. not make people afraid excellent all right um lane i'm just going to ask everybody but why don't you start off just quickly how can people contact you learn more about you uh, I have a website. It's uh, Lena Dopper, D O P P E L dot com, and there is my email address and my <clears throat> my uh, telephone number on it, and uh, also my Facebook and my Twitter profiles, LinkedIn, Xing, everything is Lena Dopper. So Excellent. you will find me. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, and Mick. Um, well, the quickest way to find me is on Twitter and on LinkedIn, and you've got all my details there. So that's easy and simple. Excellent. And Edward. Yeah, definitely. Edward, Edward Van der Klein on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, just send me a message. Always happy to connect. All right. Well, uh, listen, this has been a fantastic conversation. Um, great questions from the audience. Uh, my name is John Golden. This is brought to you by Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. That's salespop.net. Uh, I really encourage you to check that out. You'll find uh, our, most of our uh, panelists are contributors there, as well as nearly 400 other uh, thought leaders from across the globe. And brought to you by Pipeliner CRM, the world's most visual CRM. Uh, it's all about sales. This is a, a, a CRM that's built for sales. Um, I wanted to thank everybody who joined us today uh, and those who will be listening to the recording. Um, and we'll see you all again for a great panel discussion. So thanks again to Mick, Edward, and, and Lena for a really fascinating conversation. There's a lot of stuff. I'm going to go back and listen to this myself later because there's some <laughs> great, there's some great um, nuggets and insights contained in what was said. So um, thanks again to our panelists. Thanks to the attendees. And thanks to people who will listen to the recording later.